Hey, what's up guys? It's your friendly neighborhood hacker man here. And today I got a special video for you. I got another tier list video. Now you might notice something different about uh, the background of the video, right? And that's because I actually just moved into a new apartment. It's pretty dope. Before anybody says anything, if you look at that picture right there on the wall, this one with the tomatoes right there, that is a picture out of a Subway restaurant. I shit you not, dude. If you look up the inside of a Subway restaurant, I'll put a picture on screen. It's literally the same one. <laughs> but that's besides the point. You know, it's been a while since I made a tier list video, or a video at all, really. But in today's video, we're gonna be doing a tier list on computer viruses, specifically how destructive they were, right? We're gonna be ranking them by how much damage they caused. How many billions or millions of dollars of damage and whichever one causes the most damage is gonna get ranked the highest right but before we get into that if you guys like computer viruses and want to learn more about them you can go right over to my website veracity.org where I will teach you everything there is to know about computer viruses yep if you haven't seen it before veracity.org is the home of VSEC which is a cybersecurity course that I created and in this course you'll learn everything about botnets rats worms Trojans anything that you can think of you can learn it right there so what are you waiting Waiting for head over to veracity.org right now and check it out but with that out of the way ladies and gentlemen uh you know sit back relax grab a cup of coffee uh maybe grab some water grab a freaking subway poster and uh let's get right into this video Alright everybody, so now you can see we have our tier list up right here with a bunch of old yet very noticeable, or should I say recognizable viruses right here, right? So for example, we have WannaCry, uh, we have the Zeus Trojan, the Klez virus, um, the uh, love letter for you.txt or the I love you virus, Code Red, My Doom, SQL Slammer, and a couple other ones. But let's start off right here with the Zeus Trojan, which some of you might even have heard about. I mean, most of these viruses down here are ancient right most of these uh, came out before anybody existed I don't know how old you are but starting off with the Zeus Trojan basically what the Zeus Trojan was the Zeus Trojan was a banking Trojan right so every time that you got infected with the Zeus Trojan it would steal your credit card details so that's um <laughs> that's not very good and as you can imagine it caused a lot of money in damages right so uh, actually it caused three billion dollars in damages so the full description of this virus is Zeus is a Trojan horse malware package that runs on versions of Microsoft Windows. So uh, this infects Windows computers, right? So just average user computers. And basically what it was, was it was a super advanced keylogger. And the way it was spread was by using something called drive-by downloads. So in order to get infected with the Zeus Trojan, basically it would just, um, it would just download itself, dude. That's, that's about it. And this virus started making its rounds on the internet around 2007. That's as old as Halo three dude that's a 17 year old virus but yeah the main ways people would get infected by this Zeus Trojan was phishing or drive-by downloads and even though it caused three billion dollars in damages it's still not as bad as some of these down here so with that being said we're gonna put it uh, probably about a D tier right this is actually one of the least damaging viruses we have on this uh, list here so for the Zeus Trojan we got D tier so now let's move on to the code red virus or actually I should call it the code red worm because it was a worm that's exactly what it was so a little bit of background about the code red worm uh, code red was a computer worm observed on the internet around 2001 so this thing is freaking ancient dude it's actually older than me but it attacked computers running Microsoft's IIS web server and it was the first large-scale mixed threat attack to successfully target enterprise networks so this thing was actually targeting big businesses and enterprise using Microsoft IIS servers and the code red worm was reported to have caused at least least 2.4 billion dollars in damages which actually puts it right around the uh, same amount of damages as the Zeus Trojan right here just a little bit less so basically exactly what this code red worm does is it would look for vulnerable or out of date IIS servers which had a CVE present right so it was exploiting a vulnerability in these IIS servers and as soon as the server was infected 
it began scanning for other vulnerable servers to infect, using its infected server as basically a scanner. This was like a self-rep before self-reps even existed. But again, this virus is actually one of the least amount of damages, right? It's actually even lower than the Zeus Trojan, but I'm gonna put it in a D tier again, just because it's not that much lower, and I'm pretty sure on here on this list, we have some uh, viruses that caused even lower amounts of damages. So the Code Red virus and uh, the Zeus Trojan both get a D tier from me. Also, another funny thing about the Code Red virus is whenever you got infected with it, it left you this message, which I assume would be terrifying to any boomer in 2001, right? But uh, moving on to the next virus we have, we have one called the So Big Worm, right? here. Now for some background about the so big worm, uh, around 2003 is whenever this worm surfaced on the internet. And the cool thing about the so big worm was, is it wasn't only just a worm, no, 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 but it was also a Trojan horse virus. And if you don't know what a Trojan horse virus is, um, think back to, you know, the Trojans, not those kind of Trojans. But basically what this virus did is it masqueraded as something other than malware. So one of the infection methods of this worm was it would appear in like an email or something with one of the following subjects. It would say like, uh, I please see the attached document or here's your details or here's your document or thank you. Just something that like, you know, if you were to get an email with this worm and someone's saying thanks or someone's trying to send you documents, it would just be like, you would just click on it, right? And um, so if you were unlucky enough to click on this email or the attachment that the so big worm was, the crazy thing about this is it had a back door in it, right? So it would actually, as soon as you got infected, it would immediately start sending itself on your email account to all of your contacts on e on your email. And not only that is it had a back door inside of it too. So the person that was behind the so big worm would also be able to lease your email to send spam emails. So not only was it sending itself through your email contacts, uh, other hackers were actually using it to send spam emails through your contacts. And now how much damage did the so big worm cause Veraxity? Well, you might be surprised by this, but it actually caused over $30 billion in damage, right? Which is absolutely insane. That is a lot of damage. Just from this little computer virus, dude, little, little PDF document, it caused a ton of dollars worth of damages. And just for that, I think we're going to put it at, um, you know, this one actually might be an S tier. I think this one's one of the highest damaging worms or viruses on this list. And just like the so big worm spread through emails, another virus or worm that did that was the Klez virus. Now the Klez virus also originated around 2001 and it was an EXE file and it was only about 65 kilobytes big. So basically what the Klez virus did was it infected Microsoft Windows systems exploiting a vulnerability in Internet Explorer's Trident layout engine. So basically, same deal as the so big worm, it would just create a fake email for you to click on and whenever you clicked on the attachment in that email, it would start mailing itself to all your contacts, right? So like Veraxity, who'd be stupid enough to click on the Klez virus? Well, that's where it's a little bit tricky because the Klez virus actually disguised itself as an update from Microsoft. So Microsoft was aware that there was a problem in Internet Explorer, right? And what the Klez virus did was like, it was like, hey, uh, I'm, I'm freaking Ballsack Blaster 55 from Microsoft and we have an update for you. Please uh, see the attached file to download the update for Internet Explorer. And then when, whatever you did, click on that file, boom, you were infected with the Klez virus. Now, how much damage did the Klez virus actually cause by doing this? Well, unlike the so big worm, right, it wasn't leasing out your infected email address to send spam emails or anything like that. So it was actually a little bit less than the so big worm. Uh, by $10 billion. <laughs> so the Klez virus actually ended up causing around $20 billion in damages. And that means we're gonna put it at around an A tier, right? So a little bit less than the So Big Worm and uh, obviously more than these two down here. So that was an A tier virus. Um, I think it was Chinese in origin. Uh, the So Big Worm was Russian in origin. So China, step your game up, man. Russia's got your beat. But unlike these two previous viruses we just talked about, we have a actually a recent one, right? How recent was this virus right here, this WannaCry virus, this was actually going around in 2017. So I was a 15 year old kid when WannaCry was on the loose. And WannaCry was different than all of these, right? WannaCry was something called ransomware. Now what ransomware does is it basically locks all of your files 
and then gives you a friendly message saying if you don't pay this amount of money, all your files are going to be gone forever. Now the way WannaCry infected its devices was actually uh, pretty insane, dude. It was propagated by using Eternal Blue. Now what Eternal Blue was is it was an exploit developed by the United States National Security Agency, dog, the NSA. So back a while ago, a little bit of history about this NSA exploit, there was a group of hackers called the Shadow Brokers, right? And now what the Shadow Brokers did was they actually hacked the NSA and they leaked a bunch of zero-day exploits that the NSA was using. They just leaked it for everybody to see. And now one hacker saw this eternal blue exploit and decided, hmm, I bet I can make that into ransomware, and that's exactly what he did. He created WannaCry. Now, this virus would actually probably be top of the list if it weren't for something inside of the virus that the author programmed into it, and that was a kill switch, right? So, malware experts all over the world have been, like, basically fisting this virus, trying to figure out how to stop it, and it turns out that the authors actually programmed a kill switch in the WannaCry virus. So, around the time, $4 billion worth of damages were caused, the WannaCry virus's kill switch was found, and uh, it was stopped, man. It was stopped at around $4 billion worth of damages, which puts it above the Code Red Worm and the Zeus Trojan at around a C tier, right? So basically the WannaCry virus could have been a lot more deadly if it wasn't for those, those meddling kill switches, dog. If it wasn't for those meddling kids. But anyway, I think this one's a really interesting virus as it's the only one to use an NSA exploit, dog. That is insane. But moving on, we have my favorite virus ever, right? And that's the I Love You virus. So something cool about this virus is actually it was written in Visual Basics, right? So you can see this .vbs right here. That was the actual virus, dude. It was, it was completely written in VBS. Basically, what would happen is this virus would email itself to all your contacts, much like the So Big Worm and the Klez virus, only it was disguised as a love letter. So basically, if you were, I don't know, a lonely 40-year-old man, and you got an email saying, you know, a love letter for you, Chances are you'd probably click on it, right? I mean, this was kind of like one of the first social engineering viruses. It basically tricked you into thinking you had a date. So its method of propagation was once again email, and what the virus actually did was it, um, was first it inflicted damage on the machine that it was installed on, right? So it just overwrited a bunch of random files, like images and MP3s, and then it copied itself to the addresses in the Windows address book. So basically before Gmail was a monopoly and everyone used it, uh, everyone had local installs for mail. And this was using Microsoft Outlook. So this allowed it to spread a lot faster than any other worm. And by the way, this was around 2000. It was, a uh, a little bit before Klez and Code Red, this worm was making its rounds on the internet. But who created the I Love You virus? Well, a 24-year-old computer science student actually created this, and uh, he lived in the Philippines, right? And because there were no laws in the Philippines against making malware, that's why he created it, dude. He was just like, oh, there's no laws, so I, I might as well make a virus. And fun fact, the guy that created this virus was never prosecuted. But how much damage did the I Love You virus actually do? And well, <laughs> Quite a bit, actually. It did quite a bit. Around $15 billion in damages for the I Love You virus, which puts it above WannaCry, above ransomware, dude. This little thing, this little VBS script did more damage than ransomware. So I'm gonna be giving this virus a B tier, even though it's my favorite. I would totally put it as an S tier, but we are ranking it purely based on how much damage this caused in dollars. But moving on, we have a virus called My Doom. And now My Doom is a really cool virus. Virus, right? So once again, the MyDoom virus spread by email, and it was, uh, you know, surfaced around 2004, so a little bit later than these two, but essentially what the MyDoom virus was, was it was a very early version of a botnet. So while people have downloaded this and it would mail itself to all the contacts on their list if they were infected with the MyDoom virus, it also provided the hacker, the uh, creator, with backdoor access to all of those computers. And what did, what did the creator do? whenever he had all these computers. I'll, t I'll give you a, a minute to guess, right? Three, two, one. DDoS attacks, right? <laughs> so the MyDoom virus was basically Qbot or Mirai before Mirai was a thing. Only it didn't really infect Linux devices, it infected Windows devices, and it spread by email. Now I'm just gonna give you guys a second to guess how much damage this virus caused, right? So just take a guess, you know, don't look it up. Nope, hey, I see you, don't look it up. That's cheating. But anyways, guys, the MyDoom virus actually caused 
38 billion dollars in damages. Now some fun facts about this MyDoom virus is uh, MyDoom infected more than 500,000 machines in a week. So in 2004, this was the fastest spreading virus that the world has ever seen. So the first version of this virus, actually you weren't able to um, say enter a target website to use it to DDoS things. No, it was DDoSing one website and that was SEO group. So as soon as this virus started spreading, the, uh, the SEO group couldn't handle that kind of traffic and the site just crashed. Another cool thing about the virus is after your computer was infected with MyDoom, um, you couldn't access 65 different antivirus websites. So say you noticed your computer slowed down, you wanted to go get an antivirus, right? 65 of the top of the line antiviruses were not accessible. It would just block you from looking it up. But actually, this has caused more damage than the So Big Worm, at least dollar wise. So we're gonna be moving the So Big Worm down to A. And the My Doom virus goes up to S. This thing's taken the cake. So sorry, So Big Worm. Uh, you're no longer the top dog of this, right? But now, last and uh, sort of least, we have the SQL Slammer Worm. Now, SQL Slammer came out in around 2003, and it had infected around 75,000 people people within 10 minutes. The way it infected things was basically it exploited a buffer overflow bug in Microsoft's SQL server and desktop engine. And the funny thing is about SQL Slammer is even though Microsoft released a patch about six months before this worm even came out, there were tons of people that still never updated their SQL server or even applied the patch. So uh, SQL Slammer was doing exactly what it was doing. It was just slamming SQL. So SQL Slammer is actually a good example of why you should always keep your stuff up to date, right? There could be a CVE around in there that you just don't know about. And then some hacker could just like pwn your shit, dude. I mean, if you're running an SQL server, but still, keep all your stuff up to date, man. But how much damage did the Slammer Worm cause? And that actually brings me to the F tier right here, which is why it exists. It only caused $1.2 billion in damages. So it's gonna get an F from me. I mean, that's still a lot of money, but it's nowhere near the 30, $38 billion that the My Doom virus caused. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Veraxity's top most dangerous and costly virus tier list. Know some people might be out there like, oh, Veraxity, what about the MEMS virus? Or, oh, Veraxity, what about uh, Dark Comet Rat or NJ Rat? or nanocore. Well, there's no way to actually tell how much damages those viruses have caused because they're still going out there and, uh, you know, people, other people use them. All these viruses on the list basically only had one creator. But some honorable mentions, yes, the MEMS Trojan. That's a fun virus. Um, I'm pretty sure you just reset your computer and it's gone. So it didn't really cause any damages. Uh, you know, all the rats, those are some honorable mentions. Pretty cool viruses, but they never really caused that many damages. Or at least not on the scale of these ones. But that about wraps up this video today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to see more, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Fist that like button. I'm talking like fist it, like... Okay, no, maybe not that, but still. But I just want to thank each and every one of you for supporting me. And, and uh, yeah, if you like computer viruses and want to learn more about how they're created or how to pick them apart and see how they were created, uh, make sure you go check out Veraxity.org yet again. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Veraxity. Stay safe on the internet, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.